The Easter stories of the Bible are full of wonder and surprise. Surprise of just how unpredictable the human mind can be as it maneuvers through a cascade of conflicting emotions. One minute we're full of confidence, boldly professing our loyalty and faith like Peter. In the next minute, we're in denial of what is right before us, like Thomas, causing us feelings of doubt and mistrust of what we're seeing, what we're hearing, what we're experiencing. It's a weird place to be. How difficult it must have been for those disciples to accept such a change in their lives. Perhaps if we were there, we would have also doubted. Our psychoanalytical fathers and mothers of today say that doubt is just an awkward kind of anxiety. The kind of anxiety that we get when we're not really in touch with what's going on inside. You know, we kind of know, but we don't really know but we feel something is just not right. I call that a Thomas anxiety. We, can, we, we just can't trust that this new thing that we're seeing or experiencing, it rattles us a bit too much for our comfort. The one thing about the disciples, though, is that they had walked with Jesus and they watched him do miraculous things over and over again. So why would they doubt? Why do we doubt? You know, Thomas was a good man, but like us, he had issues with faith. It waxed and waned according to how he felt and about the situations that he was experiencing day in and day out. We know him as Doubting Thomas. But perhaps we should call him Anxious Thomas because what's lurking behind doubt is mistrust and anxiety about something, whether it's real or whether it's imagined. And when we get from behind doubt, there is the joy of life and life abundant. That's why Jesus said, blessed are those who believe yet they have not seen. Why are they blessed? Because they avoid those ugly feelings of anxiety, fear, and other negative emotions which consume their day and keep their hearts small and cluttered. You know, growing up as a teenager, I used to experience anxiety all the time. I lived in the city, and there was a lot to be anxious about, but couldn't quite make the connection of what was going on. I had a therapist who taught me, when you are feeling anxious and can't describe the feeling, Take your hand, put it on your stomach. Somehow that connection of hand to stomach will bring up an acknowledgement of what's really going on. I think all it really did was cause a distraction. But isn't that what God wants us to do, is to be distracted? when we're feeling those feelings which get in the way of continuing the will of God. We're beginning to hear more and more reports of madness going on today because people just don't know what to do. They don't know what to believe, or at least at a minimum, they don't know what to do with their confusions and anxieties, they're going mad. You know, I long for the day when I turn on the television and they say something good. I've decided 
I'm going to have to raise enough money by my own television station in order to have something good on there. It's 2,000 plus years later. And our world needs a savior today just as bad as they need it then. Thank God for Jesus, who continually helps us to rise from the dead. Today's gospel lesson is a story not only about faith and the fulfillment of God's promises by the way of faith, but it's also a story of empowerment and fortitude strengthened by the breath of the Holy Spirit. The gospel lesson said, he breathed upon them, meaning he gave them new life. He gave a revived life to them by means of the Holy Spirit. He gave them power. He gave them authority, the kind of authority like our law enforcement officers have. You know, they say, I come in the name of the law. It's authority given by the state, whatever state you live in. Beloved, we come in the name of the risen Christ, Jesus with the authority to do miraculous things through faith that's backed by the Holy Spirit. That's the kind of faith that was needed then for the disciples, the kind of faith needed for us. Because for the disciples, it was a time of turmoil, suffering, and persecution. And their teacher had recently been removed from them all that they had learned from him up to that point was now in question. But for most of them, faith prevailed. Those who were anxious had trouble. What about us? During our times of turmoil, when we encounter challenges of life, when we're under such, so much stress, does our faith prevail? I heard the other day, we had an earthquake. Even our land is under stress, having difficulty managing pressures. Did everyone in here know there was an earthquake? I was so busy, I didn't even feel it. I didn't know there was an earthquake until I, my phone started ringing and people were saying, are you okay? My buddy in Arizona, are you okay? I'm like, uh, was this morning? What's going on? He said, well, you had an earthquake. I didn't even know that there was an earthquake. You know, what that means is sometimes we're so busy and so focused that we don't even know what's going on around us. I'm so guilty of that. I said our land is under stress. Our land is having difficulty managing the pressures put upon it. There's good news. Because the difference between the land and us is we have faith in a risen Lord. We always have solutions because of Christ. But what about those solutions? And how can we really know that we're going to be all right? Well, in order to answer that question, let's take a minute or two and talk about faith. Now, I know we've probably talked about this before many times, and I believe that I've shared this information with you before, but Faith is not something that we think of. It's not something we learn in school. It's something we feel. It's a reassuring feeling of trust and love, knowing that God has our back. 
I mentioned my buddy in Arizona. Well, when we were little, running around, getting in trouble, he would always say, that's okay, don't worry about it, I got your back. You ever had anybody tell you that they had your back? Jesus Christ always has our back. Every single time. It's like hearing a voice of God saying to us every single day, for I know the plans that I have for you, for I know the things that you're going through. Remember, I know the plans I have for you. God will make a way, beloved, when no way can be seen. That's the Easter message. That's the Easter story, the story that I hope that we take away with us today, not just that he rose from the dead, because that in itself is miraculous, but that he did what couldn't be done. He made a way when there was no way to be seen. He did it for me. He did it for you. So then knowing that God has our back, like my buddy in Arizona, we can boldly profess our faith, not as knowing that God can, but knowing God will. Each and every time, just as sure as the sun rises in the sky every day, God has our back. We'll always care for us will always keep his promises with us. Blessed are those who have not seen yet come to believe, for then they shall inherit the kingdom of God. Amen.